An attempt to overthrow Bolivia's democratically elected government has been stopped. And the former army chief behind the failed coup d'etat was arrested in La Paz after a dramatic confrontation with a Bolivian president inside a government palace. President Luis Arce reportedly told Juan Jose Zuniga, I am your captain and I will not allow this insubordination. Uh, Zuniga was later shown handcuffed on national TV before being forced into a police vehicle. This all comes a day after he was relieved of his duties. Earlier, armoured vehicles were seen ramming the doors of the palace as armed troops surrounded government buildings. But the soldiers withdrew after the newly appointed army chief ordered them back to their units. President Arce had called on the public uh, to mobilise in defence of democracy. The Attorney General's office is now vowing to impose the maximum punishment on the perpetrators of the attempted coup. CNN's Stefano Posibon has a closer look now at how it all unfolded. In the end, the attempted coup was defused in a matter of hours, but only after army units took control of the city center of La Paz and military vehicles quite literally rammed the doors of the presidential palace. But inside, they met a firm response from the sitting president, Luis Arce telling rebel general Juan José Zúñiga to stand down. It fills us with bravery and courage to keep on resisting any coup attempt because Bolivia deserves its democracy, which has been won in the streets and with blood, brothers and sisters. Zúñiga, who had been the head of the Bolivian army since 2022, was detained shortly after and is now under criminal investigation. It appears Zúñiga decided to move against the state after his dismissal on Tuesday. He was fired for threatening former president Evo Morales from running for re-election. We are the armed wing of the people, the armed wing of the fatherland. A worrying sign of how Latin American militaries may have become more comfortable taking bolder actions. The armed forces have gained uh, more and more involvement. They have a more of a say in public affairs. And, and frankly, this has emboldened the military in, in thinking that maybe, you know, civilians absolutely need them. And it generates this sense among the population that civilians may be unable to solve uh, policy problems, uh, that they really need the militaries to step in. In the meantime, Arce had immediately appointed a new army chief. And by sunset, there were no more soldiers in the city center of La Paz. Only regular citizens on the street defending democracy. Stefano Pozzebon, CNN, Bogota. We want to bring in CNN's Julia Vargas Jones now, live from Los Angeles for us. And you've been following all of the developments. Now, political turmoil, of course, not new for Bolivia, but these events really did break new ground. What more are you learning about exactly how and why these events unfolded? Well, Paula, what's really striking to me is how quickly it all happened and how much, how many images we have, how much the cameras were given access. Uh, we saw this play, you know, scene by scene throughout the day. Uh, look, uh, Bolivian military takes the square. We see those images of the tanks ramming into uh, the doors of uh, Palacio Quemado the, in La Paz, capital of Bolivia. Uh, and then we have that incredible video of Luis Arce, the current president, facing off against his former head of the military. I think, again, that is the defining image of today. He's basically saying, you are not welcome here. He also really relied on his supporters who came in en masse to see him and help him defend him uh, by the palace. This is what he had to say. They wanted to surprise us and the Bolivian people. We responded, and the mobilization of the people also allowed us to defeat this coup attempt today. Thank you, Bolivian people. And, and the attorney general is now vowing to uh, impose the maximum punishment on the perpetrators of the coup. But, Paula, this message that this will not stand is being echoed not only in Bolivia and in the region. We're seeing reaction from Spain, from the European Union, all in condemnation of what happened today. 
You know, what's so interesting here is how Evo Morales, you know, that looming figure on Bolivian politics, how he is very clearly involved in what went on today. Can you explain? Well, of course. Well, first of all, you mentioned that uh, Zuniga had lost his job on Tuesday. That was after he made comments uh, saying that basically uh, the military would have to act if Evo Morales actually won the election that he said he planned to run for next year in, in the presidency. Now, I don't know the background of this and how it actually came to be, Paula. We don't know the backstage action of this, but we do know that Evo Morales was a mentor to Luis Arce for many years. He actually handpicked Arce to run for the presidency, and they have had a bit of a rift. And over the past year, since Morales said that he wants to run for presidency again, it has come off as a bit of a challenge to the very predecessor that he had picked to be in power. Meanwhile, Bolivia is going through a handful of, uh, I would say, economic challenges, both of reduced energy production, the inflation, devaluation of the local currency. And Arce is seeing uh, the challenge by this towering figure that is Evo Morales as not really helping the situation. They've actually come to a political rift inside their own party. It's become a quite fraught relationship with accusations flying left and right in this kind of political, personal relationship playing out in a national stage, Paula. Now, middle of the night right now in La Paz, and we will continue to keep an eye on developments there. Julia Vargas-Jones for us. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it.